looking righteous in a tight dress. I think I might just hit him with a little biggie 101. How to tote a gun and have fun with Jamaican rum conversation. Blunts in rotation. My man Big Jock got the Glock in his waist and we're smoking, drinking. Got the hooker thinking. If money smell bad, then this nigga big is stinking. PJ's going mobile again, and we got the big ass box van. We're here at my buddy's house, and we're gonna put a motorcycle in here. Nice little Honda Express. Nice, I like it. This is my buddy Schwags. Thank you. <laughs> See, there's and the mower. oh man this is a beast That's, it's got the side covers got a little one little problem with it could be yours cool I side could covers fix that. removed nice side covers removed so they won't fall off this is a look a there was a raccoon Kawasaki up on here klr 650 and it had a raccoon on it you can see the paw prints that's so cute oh yeah this thing's dirty i'll clean it all up I've I'll, never. I'll take i'll take apart like the whole almost the whole thing that uh man what I mean, a beast you can tell where it fell down yeah. that always pops out when i when i dumped her the first two days i had her <laughs> yep front tires almost done back tire i think it's got a little more meat on her a little more meat on the back tire cool all we right we like them barely legal yep we like them barely legal what about these? So Chad's not coming over? Oh, he's on his way. Some saw horses? Sweet. Nice. I don't have room for him. But you know what? Oh. Oh, they fold out. Dude, I might have to. Yeah, you know what? If you don't want them, throw that shit in the back of the truck. We got a, we got a fucking box truck. We'll Get that moped. That could be yours. I'll fix that bitch up and sell it. See if you can get the key out of this ignition. <laughs> I'm going to take a look at this Express real quick. Just uh, yeah, oh, this thing is so. It, this thing is so cute. You should keep it covered, man. It's actually in good condition. It's been sitting on it for ten years. Dude, the tires actually look okay. The only thing that I know was oh, bad. I lost my battery cover. Yeah, that's and okay. And then I think the oil injection wasn't working. Yeah, we well, could just put oil in the gas instead. But uh, dude, this might still move. Nice. That ain't seized. I could definitely fix that up. It's so little and cute. It. I just don't have room for it right now. After <clears throat> after this. Could be uh Alright. We got we got some we got some prospects. Uh here I'll take a look at this thing here so you can get the fucking key out. Oh my god. He said somebody ditched this in his fucking driveway. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yep, it's fucking shot. Lock, lock, one. Oh, dude. Right? What the fuck? How weird is that? It's not because the steering wheel is locked, is it? No. no. It's not in gear. What the fuck? I thought there was like a anti button or something. Or it's like theft provocation device. <laughs> <laughs> what dude, the fuck? How do I rip all the tumblers out and start it with a butter knife? Oh. Or just put a, like a switch in. Like a button and an on-off switch. Oh, fuck this. All right, right? whatever. Just That's what like, I did. I was like, fuck this. Uh, fuck I'm done this. with it. I'm done with this bullshit. <laughs> God damn it. All right. So let's roll this fucker out of here. Oh, we yeah, we got to wait for we got to wait for Chad. Old mower there. It's been there for a while. You can see how far the plants have grown. <laughs> it's like the tree grew up through it. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Isn't that awesome? It's tilted on its side, <laughs> like showing off its grundle to the world. It's like, check out my nuts. Oh, man. I could fix up those bicycles and make a tall bike out of it. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So, famous last words. That ain't going nowhere. <laughs> All right, last registered in 2014. Now let's see if we can get it home. Sweet. <laughs> I'm on a video conference with work. Oh uh, yeah. I'm gonna roll out of the driveway and make sure it doesn't move. Here, I'll simulate some wild maneuvers. Oh, uh, that shit ain't going nowhere. Yep, it's good. <laughs> We're good. Let's see, first big turn. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ready to go. I was freaking out. I'm like, where the fuck are these books? I 
just pull them out. And Amy's like, what do they look like? She found them in two seconds. Yep. I'm like going in the wrong spot. She's like, they're in the bedroom. I was like, oh yeah, I she, wasn't She's that bed guy now. And she, so I got the KLR650 from my buddy. And I got it up on the center stand. First couple things I'm gonna do is take out the friggin' battery. I think it's on the other side. Maybe my buddy's battery that he gave me for free because he ordered the wrong one, so he didn't need it. Maybe that'll fit. And uh, I'll drain the oils and drain the gas in it because the fucking gas is pretty. What the fuck? I opened before. Alright. It's pretty bare in there, and there's a lot of condensation, you know, corrosion right on there. So, oof, and it stinks. It smells like old ass fucking gas. So, he had it in his shed probably for like three or four years, but it's only got um, 7,000 miles on it. So, I'm going to have to check the valves and all that shit before, you know, I'll get it running first and then uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, this thing's in great fucking shape. He's, he took off the side covers because he didn't like them, so they're gone. The windshield's gone because he didn't like it. I don't know personal preference and uh yeah i am stoked this is like nearly brand new bike i think it's like an 86 or something like that kawasaki klr yeah boy fucking water cooled single cylinder looks like the gas is left on oh my god uh fuck all right but it's only got one carburetor so that makes it a lot easier <laughs> All right, see ya. Whew. Smells like gas. Smells like old gas. It's a weird smell. It smells exactly like the XS because the thing sat out in like a yard for six years and all the gas was evaporated and all the shit in the carbs was green, which is I guess the color the gas turns into after it evaporates completely. Now the pet cuck on this, I juiced it up with some WD. I think it's completely clogged because there was a little bit at the bottom and I just dumped it all out and I threw some acetone here and tried to clean it and a lot of garbage came up here. But <clears throat> that aside, I thought that there could be a good way to try to remove the damn carburetor without fucking up the boot. But apparently the way you're supposed to do it is you just smoosh the boot and pull the thing out after disconnecting the, the throttle, which I totally forgot to put the screw back uh oh uh oh it's around here somewhere i know i just set it down and it was inside the inside the <laughs> screwdriver shit but i smushed it pulled it out and got it the guy in the video that i saw pulled off this first but it came out okay and um he even had all the other hoses out and he used a a, a screw a pair of pliers to undo the the choke or whatever and um, <clears throat> I thought that if I pulled it out, then now I can get a wrench on it and undo that. It's an interesting choke system. So, you know, it screws into it and instead of, you know, having like a, a pulley on it with a cable or whatever. So we're going to open it up and see what it looks like. Uh, not too bad. He even took off the, this bracket here and I was like, why? It's not in the way. So whatever. I got to find that damn screw. Hmm. So my red light started to come back on. Fucking GoPro. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't drain the bowl, but it drained out the uh, the in hole. And as I'm taking it off, I realize, whoa, how fucking green it is. Holy shit! Crystallized gasoline. Mmm. Look at that. Actually, the gasket doesn't look too bad. I'm pretty sure. Well, oh shit. That's the jet, huh? Wait, I thought that was supposed to be a jet. Oh, that's a jet. All right, let's begin with the soaking. Jesus. Yep. Man, I... I don't know what the hell I'm going to do to clean this off. I might need to undo my previous... What I... Previously what I've said about not 
ever using carburetor cleaner because it's a waste of money, but I might need to get some for this. I don't know. What's going to happen when I just dump acetone in there? Jesus, and this screwed up. Yeah. Yeah. Juice it up a little bit. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Whew. So, I guess it needs a carb cleaning, for sure. <laughs> Maybe not a rebuild. We'll see what, how bad the, the float needle is. Oh, I don't even know where the jet is. Oh, I don't know where the pilot screw is. Oh, shit. Where the hell is the pilot screw? It's not behind this thing, is it? You know what? Mm, no, it's not. Okay. Uh, Pilot screw, pilot screw, pilot screw. Where the fuck could it be? Oh, shit. I know where it is. Boop, boop, boop. Probably right there. Well, mm, at least you know it's factory. So I should probably... <laughs> that means you got to drill the hole, put a screw in it, and pull it out. I'm going to check it just to make sure before I put a hole in something that I shouldn't have. It's got the little mark on it with the marker. Either that or it's rust, but I think that that right there is to prove that it was untouched from the factory. So, going at it. See ya. Alright, here's something I noticed. I got the, the pin out to try to take off the float because I realized it was cleaning better than other things. I put acetone on that shit and it did not even budge the green shit. But the green shit was coming off of the float probably because it's plastic. But check this out. This is how that needle should just fall right out. And right now, I don't want to bend the fucking needle on it. So it looks like I'm going to have to force the needle out. Oh my god, it is stuck in there. Holy shit. Yep. I guess I need a rebuild. Yeah. That needle is pretty fucking stuck in there. <laughs> uh huh. Uh. Hmm. It actually looks good. And the tabs didn't get totally fucked up, and I didn't bend the tab. That is green and clogged. It smells delicious. Oh, fuck. Alright. I'm gonna crack all these things. Maybe throw some more WD on them. Ugh. Oh, by the way, as soon as I turn off the camera, this right here, you do have to remove the cap to get to it. That's where the fuel mixture screw is. The pilot jet. Whatever. Well, I opened her up. This is the slow jet. And stuck to the end of the screwdriver but at least I know that the one screwdriver that I had I had another one that I designed <laughs> a long time ago I can fabricate one for you anytime you need it but this one didn't go deep enough this one I wasn't sure if it was too wide but it looks like it just worked and that bitch is completely green and this is the main jet also completely green and the main jet, whatever you want to call it, the funnel tube. I'm going to have to clean this one because I don't think they sell this in a kit. But the little holes are completely clogged. And I'm going to have to clean that out somehow. But the needle was actually stuck until I pushed it down. And it slowly moves it would slowly move normally anyway but there's probably a lot of vacuum that's clogged and i'm gonna have to open up the top of it and the float valve here i don't think that comes out i would have thought it did i thought i saw those in the thing but i don't need to take that out it's just a seat i can clean that shit out this thing is fucked the 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 little pushing part I, I can't push it down. It looks good. It actually might have stopped fuel for a long time. But, um, just to, you know, because I'm curious, I want to come over here. Oh my god, I thought he had this open. Ugh. Oh, Jesus. 
<laughs> the oil oil plug is or the oil cap. Jesus. Alright, let's see. It looks like Oh. You know. I didn't drain the oil yet. But that's funny because I don't see any oil. Dude, where'd your oil go, man? <laughs> Alright, well, good news is it doesn't smell like gasoline in there, but... Where the fuck did your... And why is the O-ring stuck in the... <laughs> I gotta ask Schwags about this. Like, dude, did you know that you didn't have any oil in the bike? Like... That's fucking weird. Yeah, dude. Oh my god, were you running without oil in it? What? Oh, I don't know where it could have gone. No, he said he did drain the oil. I don't think he's stupid enough to run it without the oil in it. No, 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 no. He told me that he drained the oil, but why would you drain it and let it sit? Fuck. Okay. Everything's probably fine. Whoa, that would suck, dude. Okay, we're, we're probably all right. We're probably okay. I'll ask him, I'll ask him, I'll ask him. Dude, I'm totally paranoid now. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna order up my parts. It's gonna be um, a doohickey, a battery, a doohickey kit with, with, the, with the two gaskets that go around the side. Oh, I mean, they're over here. Uh, the two gaskets, it's here, and then there's another one on the inside. And then, uh, the oil oil filter, um, I need at least a kit that's got a float valve needle in it. Uh, he's got an extra spark plug, I'll make sure that it's actually new. It was in the box somewhere, and... I found this because it's broken, the holder for the clutch cable. That's all he needs to have replaced. The clutch cable's good, I think. So uh, I'll order this. It's like eight bucks. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, that might be it. I need to investigate the air filter because I, I took off the screw that lets you into it and I just looked at it. And he said he oiled it. It's a foam, it's one of the foam ones. I might have to clean it again because it had a lot of shizzle on it and it looked really really dark so um, if I think of anything else I'll just add to the video later um, yeah fun project while while I'm waiting to get that stuff in the mail he's got a nice badass manual our buddy Scotty hooked him up with a sprocket ah. A chain, which I discovered does have a master link. The master link is in here because it fell out of the box. There's the spark plug. Ooh, an iridium spark plug. Nice, that's important when you've only got one. And an inside sprocket. So that way I can do that stuff while we're waiting for all the other parts to come in the mail. And this chain, I don't even think it looked that bad. Oh, wait, no, take it back. Yeah, it's completely rusted. It's got O-rings on it. Ooh, it's an O-ring chain. And like, for instance, that O-ring's broke. That O-ring is broke. Oh, weird. Oh, weird, do ya? All right, this chain is totally fucked. Hmm. Well, now I know. I did not know that they made chains that had, literally had O-rings on them. Funny. Okay. And the sprocket is a little bit fucked because if you look at it at the right angle, the teeth are worn wrong one way. I don't know if that's too loose. It's probably all right. Maybe this model is supposed to be really loose. I'll look into it and figure it out because I've got fucking shop manuals, biatch. <laughs> Usually I don't. I'm just guessing it. <laughs> oh, uh, this thing's dirty, but it's a really nice looking bike. That muffler's cool, dude. Yeah, these tires are good. Sweet. I'm gonna dry wrap.
Alright, uh, maybe this will just be one video. The introduction of the bike and all the shit I need to do to it to get it running. <laughs> uh, I'm going to measure the battery box and make sure that the size gets correct. Because it looks like it's not that wide, but it's really fucking tall. Damn, because the one that I got is kind of wide and not very tall. God damn it. I think the one that's in that bike might actually be the same size. So, moving on. See ya. <clears throat> Alright, I had to get it off the center stand because it's blocking my access to the oil plug. But luckily, it does look like it has maybe like two liters in it. And either it burned it or he didn't fill it up like he said he did. He said he didn't drain it. And he said that he had it on the center stand when he filled it. So, I mean, <sighs> maybe... Maybe he got stoned and forgot <laughs> to put it in and keep putting more in it. So, either this thing's got seven grand on it and it's burning oil really bad, or it, um, he didn't fill it up enough. Or he's got an oil leak somewhere, but everything underneath this here is so clean and immaculate. The only thing I noticed is that when I, I put it, <clears throat> I tried to pull the clutch and, uh, and, and and move the back wheel and I moved the gears around a little bit just to make sure everything wasn't locked up and uh, that I put a, a clamp on the clutch just to maybe loosen up the the plates a little bit damn that motor looks nice and uh, when I did that it moved things around like the the pump a little bit and then a little bit came out the weep hole I know that's a weep hole because you know I worked on CX 500s and they got a weep hole and that's not terrible I would imagine the water pump is probably still fine. Maybe it would suck if the wa if the the seal was no good, but it actually kind of looks like maybe right here that the the seal would be easy enough to change if I had to. Um, and his fluid is like down to here, so Jesus Christ, can they make this a little bit easier to get to to change? The fucking horn is in the way. What the hell? I figured this might be interesting. I had to fight just to get the damn drain screw out because it was so rusted. I had to, I had to cook it with the torch and stick some vice clamps on it because the little Allen head in it just wasn't enough. So I got all the jets out and I took out the the uh, valve diaphragm or whatever. Still got to clean that out. I just brushed those out a little bit just lately, and uh, I'm gonna have to poke that out. But I am on to trying to get this thing. I gotta drill it out. Mm.
Uh-huh. There's a nice looking little jet in there. I think. I guess I see a little notch in it. I hope. <laughs> I hope I didn't just open up something I shouldn't have. I'm pretty sure it's the pilot screw. Guy says, oh, sometimes they got caps on them. You gotta drill it out and pull it out. Like, thanks for showing me. Douche. I mean, I knew this because of what I had to do on... Was it the gold wing? Yeah, I think I'll... I had to do that four times for the gold wing? Fuck, that's crazy. So now, I have to find a good little shitty ass machine screw. Yeah, so got, got my pills. It's gonna work good. I don't want to use a fucking flathead. That's stupid. No, that's too big. Damn, the ones that have the flathead in them are like perfect. Uh, I would like to not use a machine screw. I want to use something that's really gonna dig into it. Damn. Of course, the best ones I have are fucking sheet metal screws. Ah. That one's a flathead, but... Uh... Ooh. I don't know. That might be too big. Damn. This so right here... It's just the same size fucking these fucking flatheads. Whatever. <laughs> that one seems to fit the nicest, because I've got limited amounts of bits these days. So let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's in there, all right. <laughs> There you go. Now that is garbage. And there's my pilot jet. <laughs> I got some piece of metal in there. Oh well, motor will burn up. <laughs> uh, I'm not really serious about that. I'll blow it out later. Let's see how green this thing is. Mm, mm. Before I move it, I'm gonna tighten it down and see how many turns it is. How? Long? How? About one and a quarter or one and a half. Oh. Oh. I got a special tool that I ordered from Germany. It's really fancy. <laughs> this thing cost me like a hundred dollars. Fucking bullshit. OEM. Come on. <laughs> I swear to God it works. I use it all the time. Fish that bitch out of there. Mm. Oh. I got the washer. And the o-ring is probably bashed into the bottom. If I have to blow the thing out of there, I will. Oh, there we go. And it's just a little bit smushed. But I just ordered a carb kit, which is gonna come with a brand new one of these. And look, it's not completely fucking green. That's amazing. So that that probably would have been fine, but uh, you know, whatever. All right, so clean these out, get out the, br the brush and the Dremel, because I think I'm gonna wanna like Dremel this shit. Um, I can't get the shit out of the bottom of the hill. 
Soak it in acetone. Ugh, gross. All right. Tomorrow I'm gonna open up the pet cock on the gas tank because it's clogged. It wouldn't let any of the fluids that were in the bottom out. And I hear sand and junk in it, so I'm gonna have to like douche the thing. And then after this is clean and the tank is gonna be working okay, and I know that I'm gonna have, I'm not gonna put oil in it because I have to take off the the this thing, this side cover here to replace the doohickey. And while I'm waiting for the doohickey and everything else to come in, I, do, I love saying doohickey, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> they could come up with a better name for it. And then I'm gonna change the, the chain and the sprockets, which should be relatively easy. I mean, pfft, that's like, like on the, what the, that one show on YouTube, the guys, they say that's like a, a, th a two or a three beer job. I mean, between a two and a three. Two. <laughs> it's it's not a one beer. A one beer would be like the turn signal bulb or some shit like that. And <laughs> that's not even a beer. <laughs> you guys have done like ten minutes. But I'm always doing the hard stuff for people. It's it's fucking funny. And uh, I, don't know, maybe I gotta start washing some more. I, I know he doesn't care because it's a dirt bike, but I want this thing to look muy like shiny and brand new and like super awesome because I think it says something about the nothing I'm full of shit look at my shit old garage all right see ya I think it's the end of no I'll continue this tomorrow see ya I'll finish chewing my peanuts but <clears throat> I'm going to uh pull this apart and I thought it might be interesting if it was like Totally clogged and green. <laughs> <clears throat> I gotta do it two handed. I always, I never want to bugger up Phillips heads, so I always put a brand new bit on. I mean, it's a really, really new one. I only use it, and I only use this one because it's ratcheting. as I thought. I'm pretty sure that it's still gonna work. But look at that. That looks gross. I shouldn't have put acetone on it because now it's curling up. I'll fix that later, but I'm gonna flip this and open it up. All right, I just pulled off the bolts, and this is not a happy pet talk. Ah, uh, man, it's why you have to keep your gas tank full and never ever let it get fucked up. Oh my god. I kind of figured when I heard all the sand noise in there, what was going on, but I didn't want to believe it. So, the inside is just cruddy as fuck. I have to 
do shit with gas and get that crap out. Fuck me. Uh, taking apart this too. Mm-hmm. Not too bad, but obviously the flow is completely plugged. So, I'm going to soak this bastard and clean it and maybe get it to work again. Mm. So I got into it just a little bit deeper and uh, I cleaned out that hole with like the smallest freaking jet poker that I had. And I took the rotary tool and I cleaned out the seat of the bowl. And I don't understand what the little passages on the side are for, but I dug them out as much as I can. I can't imagine that they go through because this is where it stops fuel. So it must just be for proper tension or whatever on it. But I looked at this and I kind of thought, hey, maybe that's an accelerator pump or something like that. And I believe it must be. So, um, uh, and I took it out and I cleaned it. it it actually looks pretty good. Uh, I mean, this is a pretty new carburetor, so it's not that bad. But this uh, this little thing goes on it, and you never want to lose the O-ring. I checked the passage in it, and I could blow air through it, so that's good. Uh, this is the little pokey I used. And um, <clears throat> the only other one I should check would probably be this. That that goes right into the carb. So the way I, the way I examine this is that it probably senses the vacuum here that vacuum goes right through the little hole <clears throat> that's part of the this is the air side that's the fuel side and it gets the vacuum from the motor to give us some extra push because uh, there was a big ass fucking spring behind it but um yeah that's another little spot that you probably want to clean out and make sure it's working just make sure that that hole right there is clear because otherwise it probably won't be that's that's where the vacuum is coming from. A tiny little hole, just making a vacuum, just to probably push more fuel in it uh, when it's maybe at a certain RPM or whatever. And this, I'm just gonna hope for the best. I guess there, I could probably pull it out. No, I'm not gonna do it. I don't want that shit to leak. It's good now. I'm not gonna fuck with it anymore. And I think it's ready to go until I get my rebuild kit, put a new valve seat in it. Put a new o-ring on the pilot jet and put some new jets in it because those other ones were fucked the petcock i don't know if i showed it on the video oh it's down here <clears throat> i pretty much want to junk it because in there the screen fell out of the reserve and this one right here is almost shot so the screen's no good the the gasket in it was good and I probably just could have cleaned it and put it back together and the valve would have been fine. The, but the O-ring on the valve was bad. So I would have had to do a rebuild on it anyway. But you can't just buy screens. Or I didn't notice that there were screens. And I was like, 20 bucks, new petcock. It's fine. I don't like buying aftermarket petcocks because usually they suck. I'm worried that maybe the gap where you put it in is going to be wrong. You know, the, the holes for the bolts won't line up. But... I ordered the one that I thought looked like it was the most legit. You never know, I might have to order another one if it's wrong. But that thing, that tank, I'm gonna have to zhuzh gas all the way through it. And I'm gonna move on to the sprockets as soon as I put the rest of this back together. And yeah, that's gonna be easy, but there's already videos on that, so I might just show it just to make this whole video complete it's gonna be super long like klr you know i don't know putting it back on the road maybe that's what i'll call it so see ya so as you can see i got my ppe on right now and took off the cover for the getting to this and i banged out the nut oh you know what i gotta step back Whew, almost forgot the guy in the video I watched in order to crack the nut he uh, locked up the back wheel with the brake I'm gonna try to rig that up really quick before I get ahead of myself here because I'm gonna be in trouble if I have to figure out how to lock up the gears and the head in order to break this nut loose so 
gonna backtrack for a second here and lock up the brake and see if I can bust that nut first. Hold on. Okay, <clears throat> so I uh, took a bungee cord and it's holding down the brake pretty good. I put it in first also and that back tire ain't going anywhere. So <clears throat> I got guy said it was a 27 uh, 27 millimeter and it fits so we're gonna see if we can break this nut mm. like butter baby yeah that's a nice cool clean that off and <clears throat> now, <laughs> now I'm good to cut this fucking chain. PPE. Safe. Oh yeah, got to unloose the brake so I can pull it all out. But that's easy peasy. That's how you're supposed to cut off a chain. <laughs> Hopefully the new one fits. <laughs> I'll blame Scotty if you bought the wrong one. All right, I'm gonna undo the brake, pull it out, and start doing shit. I'll be done with this in pff, no time. And the only shit I gotta do is loosen this up. I never did that before. Gotta break that nut. Easy. Nothing. I don't even have to make a video about that. <laughs> cool. I undid the brake. <clears throat> and, uh, just figured this is a cool part to see. There we go. That chain was pretty fucked. It was really rusted. Probably the original O ring. And the sprocket was getting really thin. And worn on the front side and this one was still pretty damn good and worn on the back side and honestly there is a weird thing in front of the sprocket that wasn't on that other guys will you hear that there's a storm coming all right <clears throat> now over to this side <sighs> i'm gonna take a guess that i have the right Oh, Jesus, who the fuck did this? Oh, my God. <laughs> I should just buy one of the big boxes of cotter pins because of how many fucked up cotter pins I have to remove from bikes. Ah. Ah. All right, I'm going to fight with this for a little bit. But I just wanted to see if this was the right size. Uh-oh, I don't think it is. 22? Maybe it's another 27. Huh. All right, definitely not a 19. Fuck that. I'm gonna get this off. You guys said to remove the brake helper too. You just undo those. And I thought I'd just come outside because the storm's brewing. <laughs> and I'm safe inside my garage. Stuff to do. This is wonderful. Uh, let's see if it's a 24 millimeter. Doesn't look like a 27. Yep, 24 millimeter on the back. And need my extension. For, oh, drop my nuts all over the fucking place. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh-huh. 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 You said that you didn't have to remove the caliper, but I... Oh my god, I gotta get... 
fucking <laughs> my burger bar off the city so didn't have to remove the caliper but it just made it a lot easier and when a guy says he makes it a lot easier and it's really not that hard to do i don't mind doing it <coughs> this here. don't drop the bike I got on this fucking nice ATV lift here. I am so glad that that dude gave it to me for free. Oh wait, no, dude didn't give it free to me for free. The guy, <clears throat> the lady that I bought the gold wing from, interesting story. Uh, her husband had two motorcycles, me and my friend Justin Dahl. He told me, he's like, dude, you wanna, you interested in a gold wing? And I was like, yeah, because <clears throat> I thought it'd be cool to have a big bike like that. And uh, he was buying a CB450 or 554, and um, he the older one was the 550, and the Goldwing was the one that he had before. And he had bought a Beamer, a really nice motorcycle, and he killed himself on it. So that's how I got the Goldwing. <laughs> but she was selling it to me real cheap, and she just gave me that because it was also in the fucking garage. Um, and I was like, sweet, all right. I never know when I might need that, and I used it to, to set the motor on, I think, when I had it out of the, when I had it out of there. You know, the guy said that you can bang it on the nut, but I don't like banging nuts. <laughs> banging nuts. And I'm hitting it with a fucking mallet, so only dumbasses use fucking solid shit. I probably got a video of me banging one. Damn, that's really in there. <laughs> I should probably loosen up these nuts too. Oh, they are loose. Okay, all right. Yep. Yeah, that one right there is not so loose. Looks like a 12. This one's 12. No, no it's not. Whatever, fucking thing. And, up. Oh, showing yourself off again, huh? I gotta, holy shit. I gotta batten down the hatches. Whoa! Whoa! Oh shit! Hatches are battened down. I, I think I hear shit crashing outside. This isn't good. This is scary. Sorry, it's probably dark here, but I'm just gonna crack all of them. And it was funny because I freaked out because I forgot that this thing has a damper on it. And I was like, why the hell is it coming off? I forgot. <laughs> it, uh, it's not a big deal. <clears throat> but yeah, this sprocket's shot. I already cracked that one. <laughs> open some brand new packaging and this thing will be ready to ride except for the fact that I don't have like the other eight parts that I need <laughs> fuck hurry up so I like to check and make sure before I install the parts that they're gonna match and it looks like the bolt holes match and maybe there's like one more sprocket on this because the sprockets don't match but I don't really give a fuck about that it looks a little bit better because it's thicker that's pretty cool yeah, the teeth on this one were totally just about shot. They, the, the wear on it is just, it looks like it's been getting bashed. Now this one is a bit odd. It does match. It looks fine. But this one has two holes for putting in. And there are not two holes to put on there, but I'm pretty sure you don't need them because obviously it locks in and you put the locking nut on it too. Um, I think that this is probably backwards 
so it goes on this way because I tried to pull off this rubber and it does not want to go it must be like a dampener or something to space it out correctly because it was on the bike this way the, my fingers coming out is the direction that the nut was on and so I'm thinking that if they were going to be like this Uh, uh. So on this one, the spacer on the back provides the amount of space that it that it needs right there right here with this. So I'm going to crack them open, see if I can fit them on. And because my buddy at City Limit Moto Nick let me borrow his torque wrench, I guess I might as well use it. Mm. I believe it said 25 pounds. So it was already torqued down. And I'm pretty confident that you know it's not the kind of thing that goes. These are locking nuts and they didn't have Loctite on them. And this isn't the kind of thing that, you know, it is the kind of thing that comes loose, but I'm not too worried about it. So I'm gonna stick it back in there and I got my tub of freaking mag one lithium grease. I'll grease the piss out of this. The end of this right here was corroded. And so I hit it on the wire wheel just to clean it off so it goes in a little bit smoother. It was catching on this on the way out and it almost bent it out, but I I got it to go back in. As soon as it compresses, it'll probably be fine. All right, I'm not gonna show all of it, but I'm gonna get it in there and maybe just show me putting together a chain, that's it. All right, this one, I checked it with the other one to see how far it went over and I heard that you're supposed to let the the number of sprockets show on the outside, you know, I don't know for people figuring out later. I got the wheel back in and with me grinding off the corrosion that was on it, it slid in like butter. And so I'm gonna slide in the new, new chain and see what the hell it looks like. Oh. 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 All right, well, anyway, I just wanted you to see that this was maybe two or three sparks away. I didn't get all the slack out of it. And that was a hint that the previous chain must have been stretched because it was on the last. <laughs> the very last end here and these were basically maxed out so i've got to take some time and go at these things right here and this one right here was a little stiff and yeah, i need to spray some more wd in there just to kind of loosen up i can cover it in wd but not enough but i probably need to get it on there because i bet you there's five markers and i need to get it like somewhere in the middle so i gotta move the the axle forward but hey, I'm getting closer. <laughs> All right, so I had to back it out to like the second notch on both sides. And now I've got it to where I believe I could probably get the O-ring and the, and the master link in there and everything. And watch, it's gonna fucking just fall. Yep, there we go, there goes my bolts again. Um, <clears throat> and it was funny because this side, the thing would come loose and the bolt was really loose. And this one right here, the bolt I had to fight with the whole time, either because the threads are really rusty, and this one right here is kind of stuck on there, probably full of mud or something like that. It's a nice little system, but these sliders seem like they're kind of weak. Like, literally this is what's holding 
the axle like it's just on two you know pieces of fucking folded metal that bent you know that bend um <clears throat> so you gotta be careful and anyway i'm gonna connect that bastard and see if uh you know i, I guess yeah the chain was super super stretched because it was all the way at the end and now it's almost all the way at the beginning and when I tension it, it might end up being like right on the middle notch, which would be pretty nice. I wouldn't mind that. I'd say that would be like perfect medium. So, and it is the exact same chain that you're supposed to have 106 links. I didn't like push pull this one out and see if it was, you know, 106 links, but <clears throat> I'm not gonna waste my time counting them. I just heard that the 106 link was what it was supposed to be. So, going at it. And once again, the shit show begins. The package was ripped open and we luckily found the master link and the, and, the, and the part that goes in and we found two o-rings kicking around in that box that had the manuals and shit in it and I assumed that the other two o-rings that go on the other side were connected to the master link well this is one of the best investments ever that you can have it looks like a 10 millimeter o-ring I got two more. That's the original one. It's only, I don't know, slightly skinnier, but I, I'm, I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to work, but I'm hoping that it's going to work just fine. But Harbor Freight sells these things. The next thing I'm going to buy is the big box of cotter pins because, god damn, I actually thought that I used to own a big box of cotter pins. No, I used to just steal them from Scotty. <laughs> Scotty actually gave me this, <laughs> and I've used a lot of them. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, so I got the, the two O-rings on. I squeezed it good with my my channel locks, and I'm gonna see if I can get that fucker on there. We'll see. All right, well. I just realized I might have put it on the wrong way, but I thought about it, and if it's going to pull itself apart, it doesn't matter if it's pulling it this way and then pulling the master link off, or pulling it the other way and pulling it off the master link. So, I'm confident that it doesn't fucking matter. The bitch is on there, and it's a little bit sloppy. So, I'm going to use these screws, unlike the last build that I fucking did for the fellow. That was my wrench. <clears throat> For the fellow with the CB400, his bike, these screws were shot and you couldn't get it where it needed to go. So I'm going to slowly tighten it. Let's see, there's just a little bit too much. And of course I'm going to adjust this side and then adjust the other side. And this is the main you know, important part. Just a little bit each time, because a little bit goes on. That is almost perfect. I might actually get a ruler out just to make sure. Hold on. This is why it's good to have a micrometer. It says in here, in the final drive chapter, I looked in the back and it told me where to go, because I got the KLR 65, uh, 650 and 500 manual. I got a 600 manual here because I don't know why he said that it just one told you more stuff than another one didn't. But the uh, <coughs> the slack chain slack 50 to 55 millimeters. So if I've got my 50 to 55 here, that looks like a lot. Oh. Oh. Uh. Uh. It looks like I actually got it a little too tight now, so I guess I'll back it off a little bit. Son of a bitch. Hmm. Check out how awesome I am. Check this out. Oh. Uh. Oh. Uh. 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 And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it just a little bit because 
I got this set to 55 millimeters, which is the max slack, and I'm assuming that the chain will stretch a little bit. That is perfectly at 50 millimeters. Bam. Just like it says in the book, 50 to 55 millimeters. So that's at the, the smallest amount of slack that you can have because I'm assuming you're gonna ride this thing for like 100 miles and it's gonna get a little bit loose again because it's a new chain, you're gonna break it in, blah, 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 blah. Cool. Mm. Okay, I know I didn't put the nut back on yet. I didn't think it was a big deal showing that. But I want to point out something that the, the noise here that's going on is that I believe that the noise that's happening is that it's rubbing on that because you know, where else is it? I hope it's not on the inside of there. I can't see. I'll come around the other side and look at it because I thought I had already pinpointed it. Ah, it's hitting right there at the top. Now, I don't think it's an issue because this thing is off the ground and it's on its center stand and Generally, if you put weight on it, or if it's on its on its own weight, and this right here gets pushed up, then obviously it would change the angle of the of the of the shaft, and it would have held it up here. Because I had this set exactly the the factory spec that it wants, and even slightly slightly tighter at the minimum spec. So that right there is probably going to fix itself as soon as you get this bike back on its wheels. Just pointing it out, I didn't remember a guy telling me. I didn't watch it to the end of the video if he said that. So, there you go. So, I'm bored, and I'm waiting for parts, and I thought, uh, while I'm at it, I'll check the valve clearances on the KLR650 that I got here. <coughs> and uh, from the video that I watched of the guy, he s recommended that you remove the fan. It was just three 10 millimeter bolts, undo the little tabs and then you can get the wires off from it and just push it over to the side pull off the thermostat sensor <clears throat> that goes onto the head i might wipe it down a little bit better here just to clean it i don't know i just don't want to get dirt into it <laughs> it's gonna make a big fucking deal but um <clears throat> then you got to remove the four bolts there and I guess these two are different from these two, so you want to make sure you put them on the same side, even though they look obviously different. I saw what they looked like in the video. These ones are long and skinny, and these ones are here are short and have like a bushing around them. And I'm out of WD-40, so I gotta find some more, just because I like to crack nuts after they've been WD-40'd. Uh, he, his, had, his had something different on his. He must have had the newer one, which had, because I was wondering like, why is mine different? Um, his had a, a vacuum tube that connected right there and went up and connected over into something else. This one doesn't, which is great, so I don't have to worry about that shit. Um, that's cool. <laughs> I didn't feel like disconnecting and reconnecting another fucking bolt or tube. It looked like it was hard to get to because he needed like a special 8mm deep well socket that would just fit like in there. 
So that's pretty sweet. <clears throat> I'm gonna crack this head open and take a peek. Oh yeah, he said to take off the little bumper from there because it might hit that too. Um, just kind of stuck it off to the side. All right. All right, I haven't popped open the head yet, but I was looking in here and I found out two things I needed to know from the manuals. It was telling me that the, uh, <laughs> it's funny. So the pilot screws is two and three eighths turns out for the 650A and two, uh, A1 and A2, and uh, A3 is apparently a little bit more turned out, but um, I'm pretty sure it's the A1 or the A2, because this one's the older one, it's not the, the latest version. So, <clears throat> at least I figured that out. I thought it was gonna be two and three, or one and three quarters, because I thought I, I felt like I did like about one and a half or three quarters out. So anyway, I got that figured out. And then, these guys are dicks. When you get to the, the top end, valve maintenance, valve seat inspection, whatever valve maintenance, the, there's a little asterisk there. It says, refer to base manual, and I'm assuming this must be the base manual, and that's why he bought it. Which is cool, because he's got it. And the clearances are just what the guy said on the uh, the video that I watched. So the intake valve should be 0.1 to 0.2, and the exhaust should be 0.15 to 0.25. Which is usually what it is, is you get a little more clearance on the exhaust, maybe because exhaust valves are the ones that kind of get hot and beat up more, and they get tighter faster. So on every model of bike that I've ever inspected, it's always been a, a larger tolerance for, or a higher number of a gap uh, clearance for the exhaust than the intake. So that's what they are. If you can read them, hopefully this fucking camera is focusing. I was thinking about putting the wide angle um, macro thing on it, but whatever, it'll work fine. I'm, I'm reading it to you out loud. So I'm gonna work on getting this head off. <clears throat> and hopefully it won't take too much except just a couple whacks with this thing. Mm-hmm. Mm. I bungeed up these cords and took out the uh, the bracket there like it said to do. Mm-mm. Hmm. This here might get in my way. Mm. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna remove that, whatever the fuck it is. It looks like that must be the sensor that he was talking about on some other model. So I'm gonna just get a bolt and take that out of the way. <laughs> Alright, so I got my headlamp on now, so hopefully you can see a little bit better. Apparently, this right here was like the condenser for the, uh, for the, the spark plug. And uh, they mount it right there. And I'm only assuming it's the condenser, because, you know, it just makes sense. That's an interesting looking gasket. I would have thought those would have been little tabs, but apparently they're part of the gasket. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And they sealed it, which is cool. <clears throat> I guess I'll put a little bit of gasket seal around it and clean this thing off. But yeah, it looks good. Perfect looking gasket. Boop, put that over there. Now this looks interesting. Cool, yeah clean off this crud because I'm going to have to put my own seal on it and clean it with acetone and junk and uh, well, there's oil up here so it's better than no oil because I was worried that this thing didn't have enough oil in it but the guy in the video said 
he didn't tell me or maybe I forgot 19 millimeter down here it looks like they marked it so it's gonna be turned and he said counterclockwise only even though like there's no arrow on it saying which way it goes and he says that these arrows right here are going to both be pointing that way see right there and there and they'll they'll have an opposite line on it and they'll just go choo! that's going to be top dead center <clears throat> well, i'm assuming it's like almost right where it needs to be where's my socket here's my socket so run it we're going to turn it and plug in it Let's see what, oh jesus went too fucking far already god damn thing I can go backwards a little bit. No, I'm not gonna go backwards. We'll just fucking keep turning. Oh, Jesus Christ. I should take the plug out. I already had the plug out. Whoa, that thing looks crazy. Well, that's the advancer, huh? I thought they said it was electronic advance. You know, I'm gonna get my, my regular wrench because. I feel like the, uh, oh fuck, I can't even do that, <sighs> Jesus, that's right, because it won't, it doesn't fucking stick out enough, so how the hell am I going to stop this thing, uh, hold on, uh, mm. I'm going to put this on my breaker bar, hold on, so, hmm, hmm, This might be it because, oh, you know what? I don't see the T mark. Or wait, that is the T mark, isn't it? That was the mark. Maybe I should turn around a few times and see. <coughs> Ugh. Tension on it. Now on the opposite, a bottom dead center, I think. I think that was the T mark. It just barely has a mark on it at all. I'm about three quarters of the way. I can tell by where the arrow is. Whoa. <laughs> Not nice to him. That's fucked up. Really close. Right there. Boop. Oh no. That oh that's the fire. And right. Right. Ah, F. It's not a T, it's an F. And that's a little bit crooked. C. F, maybe it's supposed to be a T. Ah, uh, T. Right there, okay. So it's a T mark. Because that's the only thing that makes sense, because right there, that is exactly it. So probably just a little bit. Might be a little bit off. Maybe. Huh. I don't even know if this thing has a cam chain tension on it. I, if it did, it was probably this thing right here. Because it's pushing right there on it. So, I don't know, maybe the cam chain tension is a little loose. I can't, like, check the slack in it. Hmm. I'll look into that. I'll look into the cam chain tensioner. Because a, valve, a correct valve adjustment wouldn't be done unless 
you would already adjust the cam chain tensioner. So that means I'll probably turn it, you know, down to bottom dead center, or no, one of the one quarter ways, and uh, one quarter, three quarters, and then that'll remove the slack. Uh, it'll remove the slack when I loosen it. Uh, let's see if I can figure this out. So I've got for the 0.1 millimeter, I got a 0.1 millimeter and a 0.18 for the in between and a 0.2 for the max. And for the exhaust, I got the 0.15 and <clears throat> I could use the 0.2 for somewhere in between and the 0.23 and the 0.25, somewhere in the middle and for the max. And I'm gonna obviously start with the minimum on the intakes and we're just gonna see what the hell happens. Okay, so I checked the clearances and it appears that the intake valves are exactly at their, what well, was it, intake 1.5, or intake 1.0. Uh, the 1.0, if you slide them into one of them, it is loose, nice and loose, so it's within spec. It's right at the edge because I can't get... Let's see, I don't think I can get a 1.3 in there. Uh, oh, I can still get a 1.3. So between one, that right there is like perfect. That I would say that is exactly within spec. I'll check the other one and that one is perfect. So the intake valves, you know, I expect those to be like that. But <coughs> on the exhaust, which is supposed to be one, uh, 1.5 or whatever, I, uh, I had to actually move the crankcase a little bit before the T-notch and then I could just get I could just barely fit in the 1.5 the minimum and it's it's not easy it's a little it's a little fucking tight and uh, this one right here is good so the 1.5 I don't think I can get a 1.8 in it I don't think I can get a 1.8 into that one let's see what I can do yeah so that leaves me with a problem because the the right exhaust valve is like just perfect, just on the edge, maybe slightly within tolerance, not at the end of it. And this one right here is either right at the edge or too tight because, you know, I had to move the crankcase a little bit. So I need to investigate what that shim right there is doing and see, I don't even know how to fucking check check the, the valve on it and god damn it of course I have to remove the freaking advancer if I'm going to take that off because it looks like you remove I think in my research I'm probably going to find out that yeah you're supposed to remove the the cams probably to see what the fuck's going on so I'm going to see how much of a shit show that is and you know it's just within spec barely within spec and I can run it Damn. Alright, I'm gonna see how much it takes to change it. Alright, I don't know if I'm gonna delete the other part of the video or... But anyway, I went through and I did the, the recheck on them. <clears throat> and with wiggling it on and off, but, you know, still basically lining it exactly up with the T-mark. I should probably get it in there, like, really perfectly before I start removing some things. Right... There. I only say that I had to wiggle it a little bit off from the T-mark because I still thought that maybe it was a little bit not forward enough. So I rolled it forward before because I thought it was slightly off. Cam tensioner is going to have to come off anyway to redo these, but I wrote them down for posterity and according to what they're supposed to be, I'm looking at it backwards here. The intake should have been between 1 and 2 and it's right at I think it's a little bit looser than 0.3 and 0.3. I can't get a, a 1.5 in there. And the uh, <coughs> the exhaust, the minimum is 1.5, and I've just got a pretty dim close to 1.5, maybe slightly looser. And that front left one, that's this one right here, that's the only one that's out of spec, and I have to take off both of them, both of the cams anyway. So I'm just going to see what's in there, Maybe I can jostle them around a little bit. I mean, if I moved that one, then it would be on... It would still be with inspect. It would have been like 
0.5 to 0.2 and then maybe like 0.22 or something like that, but I can't measure 0.22. I could see 0.23 maybe. I don't have a 2.2. Um, but I could bump them all up one if I've got the right amount of shims. I found my shims from my XS 1100 leftover from that project. And if I can move the numbers around and play the game a little bit, maybe I can get this thing to be just where it should be. <clears throat> and I watched the guy's video and yeah, you know, don't drop the bolts into the case, <laughs> that kind of shit. Uh, that would be terrible. But it looks like I'd be safe if they fell over here. Yeah, that guy was too worried about stuff. Only over here you gotta worry about if they fall in. But, you know, remove them, remove them, then, re then remove uh, the stay, or the, gu uh, the guide, and then you can just undo the cam chain tensioner. And it's so, it's actually super easy. The guy just said, you know, fucking take out the bolts and uh, <clears throat> undo this bolt right here, take out the spring, and then just push the tensioner back on. And then when you redo it again, you just gotta make sure that these are here lined up as close as they can be when you're putting it back on, which is, that's normal, you know, cam chain valve stuff that pff, I've done before, so. No biggie. I'm going to rip it apart and see what numbers these shims are. And we're going to go from there. See ya. Alright, bad news. I end up in a conundrum. This is the way that you see it as I have them sitting out here. That's the exhaust. That's the intakes. And the one that was really, really wrong was that one. Now I could take the 250 or yeah, the one 250 that I have and put it into there but I have nothing to get this one back into spec I can't just take the 255 and put it into there because if I made one of my intakes the both of my intakes were exactly the same if I bump it up to well, no I can uh, if I make it, no, no I can't I can't because if I take that down, it'll be 0.8 or whatever, which is too tight. Just, like, slightly too friggin' tight. <laughs> too tight. So, and, and in my spares that I've got, I've got huge numbers. I have a 255 and a 265. Those were the closest in a, a 260. But, you know, we're trying to go the other direction. We're trying to go smaller, not bigger, um, because... You know, usually that's what happens is you have to keep making, putting in smaller shims because the valves will get tighter and tighter and you gotta keep loosening them up. And this is just weird. It's just the luck of the draw. You don't even know what it's gonna be like when you get, you know, the bike put together and whatever they did at the factory. But it was almost 255s all the way around except for the one and that one right there now is the tight one. So really, I could probably get like I could, I could bump all of them up I could you know and give it some extra longevity I could put um, I could lower this right here I could put uh, a 245 in there and just swap the 250 into there yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start writing this shit down I'm going to put <coughs> so I'll write it all down first. This one here has got a 255, and this one here has a 255, and this one's got a 250, and this one here is a 255. <coughs> I can move this one over to here, just throw that one out. Out. <laughs> doesn't really matter. Get a 245. Get another, get a 250 for here. Uh, yeah, because I would have just moved that one over there. And get another 250 for this one. So I'm saving one of the 250s and just lower and dropping another one because I think they're all like at at the limit of their of their spec like so that'll make 
the this right here a, a 0.18 and then this one right here will become a 0.18 and this one up here would become a 20 and this one over here I actually should maybe put a 45 in it that's what I should do make it a 45 which would make it 0.23 okay so examine these if what I'm going to be making them is going to be good 0.23 is just a little bit less than the max clearance that's cool because obviously that one's shrinking it's on, it's on the shrink 0.2 would be perfect because that's exactly in the middle 0.18 would be almost at the edge of too, slack, too much slack and 0.18 is pretty much the same and these are all really loose and I think I'm safe with that so I'm going to buy two 245's and a 250 and that's it problem solved and another thing for the mailman to have to deliver to me <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Alright, this is my departing video. So far, everything has been placed, and I can't do anything now except for wait for my orders to come in. The battery, the doohickey, the clutch stay, the freaking carb kit, and now some shims because. Well, <laughs> it's kind of nice, I guess, because I'm going to have like three shims I'm going to be able to add to my collection. So. If anybody needs a valve job done on like a Yamaha or a Kawasaki that's got shims in it, psh, I can do that for you. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of positive that these are here exactly the same size. Like I don't think, yep, yep, same exact size. Yamahas and Kawasaki's use the same exact shims. So now you know. Now I know. Uh, so I'm going to make compile this into a video and uh, we'll, we'll add it to the gambit. See ya. This is in the back looking righteous in the tight dress. I think I might just hit him with a little biggie 101. How to tote a gun and have fun with Jamaican rum conversation. Blunts in rotation. My man Big Jock got the Glock in his waist and we're smoking, drinking. Got the hooker thinking. If money smell bad, then this nigga big is stinking.